Okay, good. Uh, so thank you. Uh, happy to be here at the conference again, uh, even if uh, only virtually uh, this time. Uh, so uh, my talk would be uh, about mental reference. Um, so reference is usually understood as a relation between a uh, certain type of linguistic expressions and an objects in the real world. So uh, referential expressions refer to objects in the real world. Uh, that might uh, work well for uh, mathematically formulated theories, pro but I will argue that for uh, if we apply this to a natural language, uh, this is ex uh, this view is exactly what leads to a number of uh, reference uh, puzzles, <coughs> well-known reference puzzles. And if we uh, adopt uh, another view, which I propose, that referential expression refer not to objects in the real world, but rather to mental representations in the hero's mind, then uh, those puzzles uh, will have natural uh, natural solutions, actually. And uh, okay, uh, so uh, what um, uh, what uh, the uh, original view uh, misses is that uh, is the communicative uh, aspect of. Uh, natural language. So basically uh, the main function of the language is communication and communication is information transfer or transmission from the speaker to the hearer. So not uh, not the evaluation of the truth of the sentence, right? We are not uh, just saying uh, some uh, true things because they are true. What we want to do is to uh, communicate something to uh, tra transfer our information to the to the hero. So, and uh, from the uh, from this point of view of information transmission. So, for example, so or let's start from some computer metaphor. So, if one server wants to communicate something to the other server, so new information should be linked to the old one in the uh, in the uh, second server, right? So, and uh, the first server would issue a statement to update, like in that case, like uh, if we want to communicate like that even of salary is 5,000 rubles, right? So the comment would be like, uh, command would be like to uh, update, like uh, the employees table set salary to 5,000 where name is Ivanov. So if we, uh, and then the, the table would be updated uh, and stored, new value will be stored there. Uh, and if we want to evaluate truth of the statement, so that even doesn't make sense, right? Because it's a, it's an instruction, it's a, uh, not a proposition, it's uh, some uh, imperative procedural uh, thing, right? Uh, and what can be, uh, what we can evaluate truth of is the uh, updated state in the table, right? So that line here can be evaluated as true or false after the update happens. Okay, and uh, uh, I think the same happens in the uh, linguistic communication, right? When we say by words that the one of salary is 5,000 uh, rubles, right? That's exactly what we want to do is to update mental representation in the hero's mind, right? We want uh, uh, the hero to find the uh, <coughs> corresponding representation for Ivanov, right? And uh, update uh, insert or update the information that uh, his salary is uh, 5,000 rubles. So, and again, uh, uh, what we, uh, in that case, the uh, even declarative sentence of natural language becomes also a kind of uh, instruction, uh, a kind of imperative sentence that instructs here to do something. And it, it cannot be thus evaluated for truth. What we can evaluate for truth is the, again, updated uh, representation in the hero's uh, mind. So that's uh, what uh, dynamic semantics uh, adopts, uh, like the uh, 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 file change semantics by Reinheim, uh, uses uh, file card metaphor, says that uh, the hero's task is to construct 
a file which at any point in the conversation contains all the information that uh, the speaker has conveyed up to that point. Uh, a card corresponds to a discourse referent, and the discourse referent would be an uh, important notion uh, here in my talk. Uh, so, and the meaning of noun phrases is procedural in uh, this semantics. So, for every indefinite phrase, uh, start new card. For every definite, update a suitable port card or, or uh, discourse referent. And then sentence meaning becomes a so called context change potential. So, it's like a procedural. So, how it's uh, the meaning would be how the sentence updates the context, updates the uh, mental representation in the hero's mind. And uh, it's the entire file, not a, a sentence which uh, can have true conditions. So, discourse reference. So, what are, what are they? So, these are uh, mental entities that stay for uh, all kinds of objects being discussed. They can uh, uh, correspond to real reference, to like hypothetical objects, fictional, abstract objects, whatever. <laughs> Uh, and they can be introduced linguistically or extra linguistically. So if we perceive some object that also creates like a discourse referent uh, in our mind for, for that object, so probably mental referent would be a better notion, but uh, discourse referent is a uh, well established term. <coughs> Uh, relation between discourse reference and real reference is many to many. So several discourse reference can potentially uh, correspond to one real reference, or vice versa. One discourse reference can be uh, can map to several real ones. If, for example, I don't distinguish uh, twins, that would be the case. And uh, discourse uh, reference can have no corresponding real ones. If we again saying about hypothetical fictional objects and so on. Uh, and the important uh, feature of discourse reference is, is uh, that unlike real reference, they can split and merge as discourse progresses as we uh, as the state of mind is uh, updated. So let's uh, move on to, to the puzzles then. Uh, so the well-known fracas uh, puzzles about Hesperus and Phosphorus. So, if uh, those two terms uh, have the same value, then uh, those uh, pairs of sentences below must be equivalent, right? And there are a couple of uh, uh, variants of this puzzle, like informativity, uh, like w w versus, uh, while Hesperus is Hesperus is non informative, like it's a tautology, Hesperus is phosphorus seems to be informative, right? Uh, uh, and if we put those statements under belief state, on the belief predicate, then uh, the sentences even can have uh, different truth values, right? Right. That John believes that Hesperus is Hesperus is likely true, right? But John believes that Hesperus is Phosphorus uh, could be false, right? If uh, John doesn't know that those two uh, uh, objects are the same planet. Uh, Okay, so Frege's solution is known, right? That uh, uh, he uh, suggested that uh, the value is split between sense and referent, right? And the uh, uh, sense is a you know, meaning, is a mode of presentation of a referent. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's a rather insightful uh, uh, thought, right? Uh, but I, I'm not sure if Reggie uh, ever uh, has uh, formalized his notion of sense and especially how it uh, uh, would be used in, in connection with uh, belief predicate, for example. Uh, so, but the uh, dynamic semantic solution, so what we uh, we uh, actually can uh, adopt this uh, Frege's triangle, uh, but what we uh, need to change here is instead of uh, real referent here, we have a uh, discourse referent. And we a bit clarify the, the sense. Uh, so the mode of presentation is essentially right, but like in uh, this uh, particular view of uh, dynamic semantics, uh, sense becomes a pattern to search uh, for a discourse referent in the uh, kind of mental uh, database. So, uh, and then uh, I think Frank's puzzle uh, will have a natural solution. So it's uh, 
uh, even uh, conforms to our intuition, right? What's happening there, right? So uh, if John has two distinct uh, discourse reference, two distinct mental representation for Hesperus and Phosphorus, then uh, when we uh, inform him that Hesperus is Phosphorus, uh, that would be informative and leads to a uh, merge of those two uh, discourse reference into one, right? So it uh, results in non vacuous update of the mental database of uh, drone. So that's why is it in informative. And uh, <coughs> basically, uh, here we have representation for John doesn't believe that Hesperus is phosphorus when it, he has two different uh two different uh, discourse reference and uh, at the bottom we have john believes that has versus phosphorus when uh, those two uh, uh predicates apply to the same uh the same uh, discourse reference in his mind uh Kripke's puzzle uh, about like pierre who believes that Londres is pretty but that Lon london is ugly Right and uh, doesn't recognize that Londres is, and London is the same city. Uh, <clears throat> basically, it's the same. Uh, it has the same solution. So we have uh, two discourse reference in the peers' uh, mind, which map to the same real one. Right. So uh, and uh, so here, uh, peers' beliefs are not contradicting. Right, because he just doesn't recognize that those two uh those two objects are the same so uh, and yeah even uh, even Greek says in his paper that probably uh for uh some people would uh, would not uh see that there is any puzzle in here so that's i uh, if you if you ask like a layman so we, is there any problems with that the problem say not it's not, not at any problem so the puzzle arises only if we uh, appeal to a real uh, uh, reference right and if we abandon this view then the, there is uh, no puzzle at all uh, fictional characters uh, characters uh, so uh, if uh, somebody say to you like that Sherlock Holmes lived on Baker Street you uh, probably many of you would say that uh that is not informative right so you already uh, know that uh, you know that fact right so but how can you know something or can call it a fact even if it's about a fictional uh character right so again uh in terms of uh, dynamic semantics and mental representation the uh, solution is uh natural and clear right so uh for uh fictional characters as well as for real object we have mental representations right and uh, if referential expressions refer to those mental representations not to real objects then there is no problem we uh refer to those discourse reference the same way as the two uh ones that uh, correspond to <coughs> our real objects and if uh this uh information uh is already contained in those uh, mental representations that we uh, would agree with that or say that it, I have already know that. Okay, so the same applies for like abstract objects, hypothetical objects, and all types of non-real objects that there could be. Okay, another, uh, another puzzle, uh, which comes from Donnellan and uh, was elaborated by Kripke, uh, is a speaker's reference versus uh, semantic reference. So, for example, uh, if, we, if somebody says about the, about the spinsters, uh, about the woman who has no husband, like uh, he and uh, that, that her husband is kind to her, right? Uh, uh, the uh, the hearer can uh, uh, somehow understand the statement as true, right? Uh, if uh, we see this woman with a, with a man and uh, we believe that uh, he is her husband, then we uh, can. Uh, understand the speaker uh, referring to this man uh, 
Okay, uh, so uh, the important point here is that uh, relation to the real world, like truth, is relevant for the success of communication. So what matters is the correspondence of the sentence to the hearer's beliefs, not to the real world, right? And if uh, beliefs of the speaker and the hearer are aligned, then there is no uh, any problem with uh, communication, right? Uh, and moreover, uh, it's uh not necessarily that uh hero uh, should believe that the man is her husband uh because uh he can just assume that the speaker believes so right so uh, basically uh, the interlocutors in the process of communication reason about each other so the speaker uh chooses such an expression to the hero so the hero could identify the discourse reference correctly uh, and the hero reasons uh, whom the speaker could mean in the current context using such and such an expression. Okay, so uh, in that case, so if even if I don't believe that the woman is married, right, uh, and I uh, hear somebody saying about uh, her husband, uh, I uh, would reason whom the speaker uh, could mean right and uh, probably identify the uh the correctly the man that the speaker meant when uh, using this expression so uh the conclusions then is that if reference is treated as a mental uh, phenomenon then many reference puzzles are solved in a very natural way or even do not appear Okay, and the uh, sentence does not have a truth value by its own, but it's a, a sequence of instructions to update the mental representation in, in the hearer's mind, and uh, that uh, only that representation that can be evaluated for truth or falsity. Uh, and uh, truth or relation to uh, real world is even irrelevant for the success of communication. So what matters is the correspondence of the sentence to the hero's belief, beliefs, not to the real world. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivan. Yes, Giacomo, please, your question. Uh, thank you for the talk, uh, Ivan, um, and good to see you. So um, I was wondering uh, if, uh, I don't know, maybe I misunderstood, but whether your proposal is risks to be a little bit too subjective or too relativistic, because I was thinking about mm -hmm. uh, Frege's puzzle, uh, like the sentence Esperus is Phosphorus. So, well, suppose again, I'm in a situation when uh, well, I'm ignorant about the fact that Asperus is phosphorus. Then, according to your proposal, I associate to Asperus, to the word Asperus and the word phosphorus, two distinct uh, discourse reference, as you call. Mm -hmm. But then it means that, in a sense, from my perspective, it is false that Asperus is phosphorus, where, which, uh, well, because if they have two different discourse reference, then it is simply false that Asperus is phosphorus, whereas in the standard Frege uh, account, they have the same reference, so that can explain why it's true. So I don't know, it seems just, I agree that it's the puzzle this solves, but I think you also need to bite the bullet and kind of accept that to say that it's false to say that Esferos is false for us, but this seems wrong to me. I don't know, what would you say? Uh, uh, yeah, I think, uh, so uh, uh, until you actually know that uh, the, the Hesperus is false for us, that the, the, those are uh, the same, one in the same planet, right? You believe that they're two different objects, right? So that's, mm -hmm. in, in that case, for you, it, it, it is false that Hesperus is false for us, right? Uh, uh, until you like realize that, or somebody says it, uh, or convince you uh, that that is it true. So yeah, that that's kind of subjective, right? Um, I mean, but uh, that 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 doesn't uh, doesn't mean that we completely ignore the real world, right? So it we, it's still there. It, it influences us with uh, through perception, right? And uh, it has the same influence to 
similar at, at least at inference to all of us and that's why we can talk and understand each other through the uh, through the, 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 the this inference that the real world has on us if i can a quick follow-up yeah uh that's mm -hmm. well no, okay, but then, okay, before I know that uh, they are the same planet, um, I mean, it even seems that my belief in a in your account, my belief is not wrong because my belief consists, according to your account, in saying that this course referent A is distinct mm -hmm. from yeah. course yeah. referent B, which is correct. So how come my belief is mm -hmm. wrong? I see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, let me maybe share it again. Um, so this, let this post Uh, here we go. So we have two different references uh, here, and yeah, actually they not uh, uh, not necessarily uh, from the point of view of John, they not necessarily mean that they're different objects, right? So John just can not can be not sure, right, whether they are the same or not. If it if he's sure that we would add additional uh, predicates there, saying that x is not equal to y, for example, right? So, mm -hmm. it, like like that. Mm, make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, yeah, I see your point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, so any other questions? I guess no more questions. So thank you again, Ron.